Hi there, this is Donna Bordeaux with Campground Accounting, and you're listening to Campground Compass, the show dedicated to campground owners in an entrepreneurial mindset who seek to grow and expand in the wild and wonderful world of business. Hi there, welcome to Campground Compass. I am your host, Donna Bordeaux. And I'm with uh, my awesome son, Zach Bordeaux, my co-host, and we have a special guest for you today. Our special guest is Barb Crum from Ocean Lakes, the behemoth, the mega park in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So welcome, Barb. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's nice to be here. Yeah, Yeah. we have go way back. We've been camping at Ocean Lakes for a long, long time, even before I knew Barb, but Barb's got an interesting perspective that we want to share a little bit of, because if you know anything about Ocean Lakes, it's a pretty big place. And we'll get into telling you about that scope. But first off, Barb, tell us a little bit about you and how you got where you are today at Ocean Lakes. Well, it was, uh, I think it was just, I guess, meant to be. Um, I I actually... uh, found Ocean Lake or Ocean Lakes found me through um, a job that I had. I was working for a nonprofit in uh, the arts and I'd been there four years. I went through a leadership grand strand. I always join your chamber. You never know where it'll lead or your association. And I went through a leadership program and I just mentioned to one of the board members that I loved my job, but I was looking for something more in the in profit you know, nonprofit, uh, going to nonprofit. And anyhow, she knew of a job. She says, you need to work at this campground because it would use all the things that, that you do, Barb. I went, I graduated from Columbus College of Art and Design. So I was very hands-on with graphic design, uh, photo design, video, uh, all that stuff. And then my nonprofit job led me to marketing. And so through those connections, uh, Lance Thompson, uh, reached out to me. He was the general manager, um, vice president of Ocean Lakes Family Campground. And I was fortunate enough to be um, a marketing director, the marketing director they hired after they won um, National RV Park of the Year in 1997. They did not have someone handling their marketing. And, you know, I was a little nervous. There are different kinds of marketing people. There are very statistical, more sales trained marketing people. And then there's people that are, are um, like me, I guess. So it has been a great um, job because it does allow me to be creative and it's an amazing place. And that's how I landed here in 1998. Awesome. And share with our crew what you're in charge of now. Like what are your primary focuses in your job at Ocean Lakes? So I work with about 18 different managers throughout the facility and I handle really um, my title is director of marketing and public relations. So anything that is advertising, print, PR related, media related, and it really encompasses all your advertising, your website, social media, changed my world, um, online reviews, special events, um, and really helping handle all the communications to the guests as much as we can through our different channels and just assisting the managers in their needs. So it's, it's a lot, there's never a dull moment and every day is same, but different. So it keeps us on our toes. That is so cool. And for our world out there, you know, in most cases we're talking about campgrounds who may be family owned and maybe they got five employees here or there. Let's dive into a little bit of the scope of the size. So tell us a little bit about the numbers. So Ocean Lakes Family Campground is 859 traditional campsites. You can tent, use a travel trailer, folding camper, uh, class A. Um, We don't, you know, whatever, whatever you're in. And then it also features 2,572 annual lease sites. And I have found over the years, the best way to describe that is we are family owned. We are still owned by our founding family that opened the doors uh, or the gates in 1971. And it's the Jackson family. Um, So the five daughters are now at the helm of what their parents built together. And one of the things that Mr. Jackson did was kind of pioneer this, um, 
they own the land and you can build or park a structure on it. And it's an annual lease to be part of our gated community. So it's 3,500 sites. When I started, there was about 170 teammates year round, which was huge back then even. Um, and now we have about 350 year round teammates and we recruit higher about 350 more. We, we swell to almost 700 teammates in season, 310 oceanfront acres and just under a mile of oceanfront property. Yeah, it is an incredible place to be uh, <laughs> and, and a lot of fun. Well, and I do like to share because um, I'm really blessed to be in this industry. I love it. I love the people. I think the people that own and operate campgrounds are really the backbone of America. You know this. You work with them daily. And, you know, they come from all walks of life. Um, this may be, they may be young and this is their family's business that they're taking over, which I love that. I grew up in a family business. My husband grew up in a family business. We own a small business. So I, that is what makes America tick. You own a small business you know, that's America. It's not all these big corporations. Um, and I like to look at, at new park operators or owners. I love the different walks of life that maybe their retirement investment that they've decided to build or own or buy a campground, whatever that may be. I always say we weren't always this big. Mr. and Mrs. Jackson were in their 50s when they started building the campground and it opened with 30 campsites in one bathhouse. We were not always 3,500 sites. So it is family land that uh, Mrs. Jackson's father had acquired over the years. And um, it's neat that the family still owns it and does a tremendous job operating it. Absolutely. And that brings along its own challenges, I'm sure. But, you know, we most people, when we're talking about a campground that big, we're talking about a big corporate owned structure and, you know, they may have different uh, sites all across the country that they're managing. And this really, I think the reason it attracts so many families back year after year after year is that family backbone. And you can feel it all throughout the park. Everything is geared towards the family. It's not the big corporate structure feeling like you get at a lot of the other bigger parks. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah. We love that you feel that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it really is layers of a family. I was speaking to a teammate who has been here about 12 years now. We have teammates that have been here more than 35 years. They may, wow. uh, in fact, Lance, who just retired, I think two years ago, who was the man that hired me, they, he handed the operation as far as the GM VP status over to Greg Bender, who actually started here when he was like 17 or 18 in the game center, the arcade at the time, Hurricane Hugo took that out. Uh, he went up to maintenance. He started learning to fix golf cars. He took over golf cars. And then he said, you know, one day Lance, I'd like, he was in leadership program. And they said, what do you want to do? He goes, well, don't take this wrong, Lance. But one day when you retire, I would like your job. And sure enough, he has this job. And so once you're in the family as a teammate, you know, you're part of the family. So we are family owned. The teammates are a big family. And then most of our guests are family. And so I think that's part of it. There's just and you're in the South. So, you know, I guess that's what makes it what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems like y'all have an awesome company culture. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It, uh, it, it, HR and the leadership is tremendous. And it's really something that the Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, I mean, and we, we really try to be true. Many of us worked when they were here. They passed. We lost both of them in 2010. Their daughters are very plugged in, but our leadership is really tremendous. Um, the CEO uh, has been here about 26 years. So there's a lot. And then we have a lot of new managers. That's you see the next generation. Like I was part of that new generation of managers. And now I'm like kind of going towards the out part and you see the new managers and and you try and mentor them with honoring what the founders intended. And with Mr. and Mrs. Jackson having five daughters, they wanted um, a business that was centered around families and um but had something for everybody of all ages, truly. 
Um, and our team alone is ages 15 to more than 82 years old that work at our team. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, so it's neat to see the younger people stepping up in the leadership roles. But every one of us from teammate orientation, we're mentored to to kind of honor what Mr. and Mrs. Jackson said, and we, we try and echo it a lot for people because those of us who worked with them know, but the people that never had that wonderful opportunity to work with them, we want them to be in their mind. And Mr. Jackson often said, you know, we're not in the campground business, we're in the people business. And, and that's really what you're dealing with as a campground operator. You're, you're dealing with people and it's not just a lodging premise, not just outdoor hospitality. It's hands-on lodging, it's activities, there's family dynamics. These people are staying here, they're playing here, they're living here. They're not just staying the night and leaving, most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really liked what you said about the people business. I think a lot of different campgrounds, um, you know, if even if they haven't figured that out yet, it's like definitely something that they need to come around to is that you got to please the people um, and, you know, be able to reach the people because that's your audience at the end of the day. So we'll move a little bit into more, more marketing side of things right now. And let's talk about how we reach people. What's kind of some of your successful marketing campaigns and what's been successful and uh, what works well? I've often told people they'd probably be surprised or maybe not at what we don't spend on marketing. Our philosophy on marketing has been, and I love the family for doing this, is they truly invest a tremendous amount of money back into the park every year. And um, word of mouth, repeat business has been the staple of success. And you know, Mr. Jackson saw, as a business owner, he saw a lot of opportunity. He was fabulous at public relations. He truly loved to spend time with the people. And Mr. and Mrs. Jackson did that at the very beginning. They, you know, I think that's a word of warning to someone who thinks they're going to buy a campground and then it's going to run itself. I would say to you, you have the wrong idea. Absolutely. If you want to be successful. Yes, if you want to invest your money and you want somebody else to run it, then you should have somebody that understands the people business. And one of the things that Mr. and Mrs. Jackson did from the beginning was they looked for opportunities and they listened to what people wanted. And you have to understand this is in the 70s. It grew very quickly. It was drawn out on a napkin, so there wasn't all the red tape you have today. Um, and so Part of the marketing mix is adding those new amenities and those new services. And that one of the biggest things that we do, you asked, I still do RV shows. If you don't do them and you're in charge, you really need to because it's finger on the pulse. And that's whether you do just one or several. Um, I highly recommend campground RV shows, the big ones, the small ones, depending on where you're at in the country. I think they're just a fabulous tool and they take a lot of time and they can be tired. Some of them have hours that are great. Some of them don't. I've spent a lot of hours standing in a convention center or a fairground or whatever, but certainly you see the trends every year by talking to the people and it does change and it's really interesting. And you just pick up on those subtle things that people say. So travel shows are one thing. Um, you still do the print media. We still do, um, obviously, website. Social media is huge for us. Um, we uh, embraced social media in like 09, and our page has grown tremendously. I think we're at like 180,000. Um, we also do um, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Pinterest, and online reviews, of course. We don't do TikTok. Uh, my team made that decision several years ago. So that's one. It shows up. You see the guests use it. And it's great to monitor guests. So we do a lot of that. We'll do special events. That's one of the things that we started when I began in 98 was really trying to target in on low occupancy weeks. So one of the things Lance said to me, he says, Barb, we want you to increase occupancy in what is traditionally lower occupancy weeks. One of those examples that was a success was I came from the nonprofit arts. I went to art school, but I also did uh, event coordinating, 
marketing, fundraising, grant writing. I worked with artists, bringing them into the public school system, uh, the South Carolina Arts Commission. So I, I really learned how to plan events and, um, and how to market them. And so right away, I went from Conway to Myrtle Beach and um, I had, I was still getting my hair cut in Conway and the man that owned the mandolin shop stopped me one day. He goes, Barb, we miss you out here. How are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. And he says, you know, uh, 50 to 70% of bluegrassers camp. And I said, Jennings, we need to talk. And we started um, Bluegrass on the Waccamaw or Bluegrass, Premier Bluegrass Weekend to coincide with Bluegrass on the Waccamaw. So we partnered with a nonprofit and I utilized his uh, experience in bluegrass. And we started targeting the week after summer slowed down in August, but before Labor Day weekend, because we were still at our summer rates. We still had our staff was still there to handle the guests. And so we wanted to reach a niche market and um, we wanted to brand Ocean Lakes as an awesome place and venue because we do have a very large recreation center. Um, it's 17,000 square feet. We can seat a thousand people. We have a raised stage and a sound system. And so we took advantage of that. And then we did, um, we added Beach and Boogie Weekend, which was, you know, the state dance in South Carolina is the shag. It's kind of like the jitterbug, different from what they do in um, England. Uh, when they refer to that, just so you know, it is um, the beach dance. It's the state dance in Myrtle Beach. North Myrtle Beach is very well known for the shag and having, um, uh, it, it's just fun. It was something that really appealed to a lot of our guests. And so we started that and we sell out every year. We'll get about 800 people there. And uh, we do it actually President's Day weekend in February, a three day weekend. So those are still tactics that we utilize. Uh, Hollow weekends. So we used to have one Halloween and um, I kept listening to all my colleagues. I learned a lot. And I would say that too. It doesn't matter what size your park is. I learned from everybody. I learned from you, Don. I mean, your wisdom and sitting and listening to you speak and, and what you do for your clients. So I kept hearing about Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. And so we added Hollow weekends and we now fill the every weekend in October, we sell out. Um, and we create a theme and um, we reveal the theme Labor Day every year, uh, no matter how much they pester us. And um, so that, that's just some of it. Um, definitely digital, you know, online is very trackable with your Google Analytics and your, you know, uh, whatever booking system you're utilizing. And well, You know, one other thing that I'll mention that you do that's quite different than most in, and I see it a lot on social media. You Before somebody is coming to your park, mm -hmm. if they've made an advance reservation, you mail out this packet and it's meaty and it's got their hang tag for their mirror. It's a pre-check-in kind of a thing. It lays out all the rules. It has all the map. It has all the goodies. Yeah. And it is another big piece to the experience. Oh, good. That a lot of people You're don't <laughs> recognize. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yes. And I'm so glad that you read this because this stresses me out from November <laughs> through the beginning of December every year. Well, I am always intrigued because every time I'm on a board and I'm on a lot of different Facebook groups with campers as well as camp owners, but on the campers groups, uh, you know, I'm in South Carolina too. So we got a lot of your population around here. I'll see people day after day after day post like, oh, just one more week. And they've got a picture of their little hang tag or they're asking, hey, has site such and such been vacated yet? Mm -hmm. I'm on my way. So you create this big line lead up to actually getting there that is as equal to or as great as the time people spend there. So it really kind of lengthens the joy of somebody's visit to your park. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, so I think that's something a lot of people could take from yes. Ocean Lake strategy. And I mean, how much does it take to mail out, you know, a little envelope with some goodies in there or even emails, you know, I know emails aren't tangible, but lining people up and getting them thinking ahead the week before they come and how great it's going to be. 
And isn't that a dilemma? I think you just touched on a, a dilemma that I think a lot of visitor bureaus and yeah. everybody is. Do we do print or do we just do digital? Because this is not cheap and right. to mail it isn't cheap. But right. more and more, I just think people like holding stuff. They like taking it with them. Yeah. So we try and do it both ways. We have that uh, magazine online uh, through a digital links. Um, we have a digital March newsletter. Every March we, we let go of our spring digital. We went moved it into a flip book that kind of gets people excited. There was definitely some things in place when I started and we continue to refine, you know, old isn't bad. You know, old school stuff isn't bad, but you learn to refine it. And I have an amazing team. I mean, I, I cannot take the credit from the guys that, that pick up the garbage to the guys that pull the storage campers to the, you know, to our recreation team and our pool guys. And I mean, just my marketing team, I, I was a one person department for the first, I guess, four or five years. And then I added a person and she was amazing. And I was a two person department and, and really social media, you can choose to do as little as or as much as you want to. But I think for the camping industry, it is a super tool because campers are very much people, people. Mr. J, Mr. Jackson used to say, how often do you go? And Donna, you've probably heard me say this. And Zach, maybe you have, I don't know. But how often do you go to a hotel and meet the people in the room next to you? Or do you want to? <laughs> Right. If you're in a campground, just pop the hood of your vehicle and your neighbors are going to come over to see if they can help. Yeah. And and there really is a social aspect to camping. And now the cool thing about campgrounds is you don't have to have a tent or an RV. There's so many lodging choices or, you know, maybe like I have family, part of them own campers and part of them do not. So they could rent one of our beach houses and then the other family would be in their RV and you can do that in so many campgrounds. So yeah. it's it's more the feel of the campground. Yeah, it's a tribe. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's really funny how you, no matter where you're from in the country, you can come to Ocean Lakes and you'll be out walking your dog and then you meet somebody who lives five miles from you. Mm -hmm. it, and it's not just, you know, local people. It's like you pop in like we last time we were there, I recall we had a guy across from us that we were talking to. He was a pressure washer here in South Carolina. He's about five miles from here. We had to have some things pressure washed. So who did I think of? I was like, oh, I think I got that guy's number in my phone. So I'm calling him up, getting him to do pressure washing for me. <laughs> so, and you met him in Myrtle Beach. I did. I met his camper was right across from us at Ocean Lakes. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I also want to give a huge shout out to the guys who pull those campers in and out of the sites from storage. It, it, it should be almost a chargeable ticket on its own to watch them. It's amazing. <laughs> I hear that a lot. And I probably need to go out there and sit and watch it myself. I've ridden in their truck with them, it makes me a nervous wreck. Cause oh, I can imagine, you know, <laughs> you know, ocean lakes. I mean, we have the double laned roads, but, and when I started, I would just really, we are big rig friendly. Well, the rigs have gotten really yeah. big <laughs> and people bring a lot of stuff with them. And it's a challenge for most park operators to deal with that, oh, but yeah. they, they are amazing. There's about 16 pull vehicles when we're, on you know going going back and forth in the season and you know that part of the myrtle beach traffic is the challenge getting in and yes. out because our storage lots sit on on the family has about 2700 acres of land and so the we have we we can store i think about three thousand campers and mr j actually and mrs mr and mrs jackson they actually kind of came up with that idea when the gas crisis hit it's an amazing idea. It is an amazing idea. He had a gas station, which was, he didn't, he did not miss an opportunity. In fact, there were probably opportunities he just didn't have time in a day to, to implement. He was always thinking. He was incredibly creative. And you see that in our business. That, you know, as someone who graduated from art school, who likes to be creative, but has this very sensible side too, 
I am amazed at the creativity of business people or entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, I can't even say it, types. And so he did, he just saw opportunities and he sees them. And not everybody can do that or has enough time or the resources or whatever, but he knew how to make things happen. And Mrs. Jackson was an incredible savvy businesswoman. She was more silent, kind of in the background a lot of times, didn't miss a thing. And they were a dynamic couple. And then with their daughters, you know, there to help them as they were getting started. So one of the things that he realized was it would save wear and tear on your vehicle. It would save gas. And the other issue was people didn't see when you were out of town because the camper, you know, like my grandparents were avid campers, but they, their neighbors knew when they were gone because a camper wasn't in the backyard or the side yard of the house. And so there's several advantage, plus a lot of, you know, homeowners associations. Now, if you live in a community, they don't necessarily allow you to have an RV in there in your, at your house. So it solved a lot of problems even back in the seventies and it just continues to grow. It really is. And fortunately the family has that land to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The, The forethought that, You know, if you think back to all the things that they lined up and how they operate today, and I'm sure they had no clue at the time what this would grow into, but an amazing process. And like you said, I would have loved to have had a chat with him. I bet he had some exciting things to say. He, he did. He was, he was, they were just amazing. I, and I feel blessed that I was able to spend some time with them and get mentored by them and see how they thought. And, and the full, the five daughters are just as, you know, we all still adore and want to honor that legacy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I looked, you know, being an accountant, obviously we track numbers a lot. So we, my husband's probably more so than I am. Chad, has a list of every campground we've ever been to, what dates we were there. We have this whole tracking thing. That's awesome. And we've been to, stayed 32 nights at Ocean Lakes. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> we are honored. I, and I will tell you, I, we have friends who, he grew up closer to the beach and he, he camped all growing up, but I'm sure they have many more days than we do. They just came back from spring break there. Um, so they probably dwarf our number, but it says a lot when you consider, I think we've camped like 800 and some nights in the past couple of years. And, you know, to have that kind of percentage of use, most people go to a campground and maybe they spend two or three days there and they may never go again, but it says mm-hmm. something big to know that all of your people come back time after time after time. And well, it's all about tradition too. It's like, especially for us, like we always built up, you know, the Labor Day tradition would go there on Labor Day and like every year, Labor Day, oh, we're going to be in Ocean Lakes. So yeah, I'm glad that means a lot and and love the generations, right? Because our team understands that, you know, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa might have started it, mom and dad kept it up, but do the kids want to keep coming here? And it I, it means a lot. And we were well aware. And, and I think the interesting thing is kind of what you said is the, in my mind for any park operator, going back to what you asked about marketing, you know, it's not always easy to keep the place year after year that people want to come back to, you know, people are. And I also say this to operators, there are amazing people here. We love our guests. There are some guests that are not appropriate to be here. And and you really, as an operator, owner, have to keep up with that. You have to remove the people that really you don't want there, that, that impact the experience of other guests. And it's challenging today. Um, it's extremely challenging. And the bigger the park, the more challenging it will be. And Mr. Jackson made some very conscious choices. The leadership here made some really conscious choices on how to manage all that. And security does a tremendous job. It's a very challenging job at times, but it's very rewarding. We just have an amazing team and and I just can't brag on them enough, honestly, but it's all those little elements that you have to keep up with. And, And of course, with online reviews, it's word of mouth, right? But now everybody goes online and they read reviews and they watch the social media pages. And, you know, that's another thing. Not every page about Ocean Lakes is official. So 
that's probably another thing is like, okay, that what they're putting out on their group page or their page, we might see it, but it's not right. They misinform people, you know, so we spend a lot of time, please, you know, you can go to the other pages, but make sure you get your information from the official page, right? Because, and that's a challenge to businesses today too, you oh, know, because yeah, people can make up and say anything and they will some of and, them. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, you know, how can, you know, smaller family owned campgrounds, what do you think they need to be leveraging as far as digital, uh, digital marketing or technology to, you know, compete with the bigger parks? Well, I think your website really has to be optimized. You know, you have to either know how to do it or hire somebody to do it and just have a strong web page. I know some parks use social media as more their their page, you know, and I think that's okay as long as you're consistently posting and people know how to reach and find information about you. The danger is that that is not something you own or have control over. So it could go away in a flash and you don't have any Very control over it. I think the web page is key, but I know that, you know, it depends on how, like, I'm updating the web page constantly you know, almost daily. Um, there's something, there's an hours, there's a, an, a, an alert, there's something, you know, that needs to be on there. Um, and our site has grown. It's, it's a lot of pages. It's, it's a lot. Um, and we're in a rebuild right now and that's overwhelming, but you know, you just need to understand how to optimize the pages. You need to constantly push everything to that page and I'm amazed at how many park operators do not use analytics because it is eye opening the day that, so we, we're big and I would say, you know, and we're old, right? You know, I, uh, 50, 52 years old, there's a lot of older systems. Um, we came on in, in there's kind of silos in some respects in the way that the company grew. Technology didn't exist at that time. So if you're a new campground, like a lot of these big guys come in where they've got the system set up and they can start right off the ground with a new system, take advantage of that reservation system. Take advantage of the technology. There's some great reservation systems out there. And that will plug in to your marketing and then also choose your battles. So I said earlier, you know, we choose not to do TikTok. It was, I have, I have two members of my team that are in their twenties, one that's younger than me, but not in her twenties. And so there's kind of three different generations on my team, which is super great. And I bounce a lot of our, us as a team bounce a lot off other teams, but even my, my 20 year olds were like, no, we don't want, we don't want to embrace TikTok, but we seriously consider everything. And, and my point to them is always, if you choose your battle, be consistent about it. You know, don't try and do everything, do what you can do and be realistic about your time and your resources and your manpower, because you know, a lot of times you'll go, I'll get excited about a business. I see something, I go to their page and they haven't posted in two years or six months or whatever. So that would be one thing. There's a lot of digital opportunities and there's just a whole lot of salespeople out there that would definitely try and sell you something. Um, be very careful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, I think that a lot of ahead. people can get, get into like a groove. They'll the other problem is that you'll see they posted like every day for six months and then they haven't posted for two years. Yeah. The burnout <laughs> real, especially on social media with that. Yeah. You got to schedule those posts. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of smaller family owned campgrounds feel like they have to be everything to everybody. And that is definitely an area where if you're not excited to do it, you probably should hire that out and delegate it to someone else. <laughs> right. Uh, we chose to bring it in house um, and keep it in house. We, we don't outsource it. I've worked with PR firms. I work with a small um, ad guy. We, we really, as a business, we, you know, we have our partners, but we, we kind of like control. Yeah. Um, and so going to being a big company, you know, I, 
I joke and I mean this and I, and I hope that people take it in the right manner. What I mean, sometimes it's the speed of government. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. it's the light, right? Mm -hmm. So there are things we can launch on the fly. An example would be the, the gentleman that programs our, we have proprietary reservation software. And, and because in the 90s, there was no such software developed to handle storage campers, annual lease sites, utilities, campsite reservations, 18 months in advance by specific site number. They just didn't exist. So a company out of Atlanta um, actually developed our software called Parkman. And that is what we live out of. It's gone through, I don't know, 3.0, 4.0, who knows where we're at on it. But it, it's, it's, a, it's a powerhouse system that is, and we've looked at existing new, you know, some of the popular systems. I always talk to those guys because I learn from them, you know. But sometimes it's okay to not jump on the bandwagon. I, more and more, and maybe it's just getting old, I'm weary of some of the trends I see. And so you see younger people coming in and they just flit and fly and go this way or tell whoever's in charge, this is what you need to be doing. And, you know, sometimes it's like buying the first year model on a car, right? A new model year or something like that. Be, it's okay to kind of sit back and, and think about it. If you're the business owner or operator, it's okay um, to outsource, just make sure you trust them because they're your spokesperson. Yeah. So are they going to yeah. match the tone that you want? Right. Are they going to respond the way you want? That is social media is a public relations tool and yeah. it can test you and it's 24 seven. It never sleeps. So I think at least a Facebook page, the demographic for campgrounds um, is, and it's so easy to pair that with Instagram. So you're kind of covering. Um, YouTube, I think, is super important. Um, that would be my next step of some kind, if you can do. But really, find what, like you said, Donna, find what you can manage and don't don't take on too much. If you're yeah. a small business and it's a husband and wife, you know, a, a niece, a nephew, a, you know, but make sure you define that tone for them. What is your brand? What's right. the platform? What how what do you stand for? And even just put some approval levels in there to Absolutely. have them do it, but you review it before you give it the A OK. Absolutely. And if it's that you post two times a week for a couple months and then as long as you're doing it consistently, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and one of the other things we wanted to touch on briefly is, you know, the pricing model. Um, how does Ocean Lakes approach like pricing and promotions and what strategies have been, you know, most successful in driving customer bookings? So when I started, I thought I felt like they kind of cut the legs out from under me as a marketer because um, we don't do coupons and we don't do membership clubs and we don't do discounts at that time. And I don't know, Zach, I don't even know if my son would know, but we had that. <laughs> Saturn philosophy, this is your price. Mm -hmm. And truly that is what that came from the founders and it lives today. The one thing that Mr. and Mrs. Jackson felt was an all-inclusive rate, meaning we don't add on for people, pets, Be, you know, your, your campsite night includes the number in your party, any pets you bring and full hookups and two overnight vehicle passes. So they have really stood by that for years. We've looked at dynamic pricing and there's people dabbling with it at this time. We don't do it. Um, it doesn't mean we won't down the road, but truly um, that's not where we're at right now. We set our rates. We have several rate periods throughout the season and, and that's where we live. Um, then there's the ancillary income that you make um, after they come in. Um, now the, the rates do go up, you know, it used to be you didn't publish. So Myrtle Beach, let's just address that. Myrtle Beach is a camping mecca. We sit yes. next door to our two biggest competitors. And um, it's funny when you go to state or national conferences, we know each other. And actually the cool thing was when I, you know, for years, the big Myrtle Beach parks have co-op together to market Myrtle Beach as a camping destination, campmyrtlebeach.com. 
And so you can go there and see the seven campgrounds. We all assess money and we put that money into a pot and we market the destination. We work together. We have an executive director and we've worked with her for years. She's amazing. And basically we'll work to get money from our local you know, governments like accommodations, tax funding, or the chambers of commerce or grants through SCPRT. Um, we'll go after that. And then we'll also assess. And so that's how we do billboards, brochures, some travel shows and other marketing tactics. Um, and so, you know, when you asked what we do to marketing, working with your competitors seems foreign to some, but um, we're very involved in the chambers and Visitors Bureau and, and just different things. Um, we served on a lot of community associations. That's another way you market. Get back to your community, get involved, plug in. Obviously, we have a bigger team. And so we kind of divide and conquer. I tend to be the one that, although I've served on many local charities and chamber, different committees and and um, stuff like that, I, I my, my focus tends to be more the campground industry association, state, national. And then, of course, the local one that we're in where um, maybe the rec director, recreation directors in IAPA and, you know, you got the pool operator guys and you got the RV center guys that are getting tech trained. And, you know, so, you know, that's important, too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. Well, I think we've covered a lot of really great topics uh, today, and I think that this is a very valuable episode, especially for small campground owners, even though obviously you're a mega park. So it's, there's a lot of things different. So, um, I think we covered a lot of great topics today. Uh, but did you, was there any places that you wanted, uh, to shout out any sort of, uh, social medias, anything like that? Well, thanks. Thank you. I hope I answered everything that you guys want to talk about and, and covered your outline and I appreciate your kind words. I would just say, you know, you can go to oceanlakes.com. You can see all our social media and that's oceanlakes, lakes with an S.com. You can see all our social media link from the top nav and um, you can watch our uh, history, our docu-series on the family history. Yeah, that's a great in. series. Yeah, it tells the story. That. Yeah, I'm check that out. Yeah, that's on our YouTube channel. You can watch Campground Conversations. Uh, you can check out social media all that stuff in our website, our rates. We're very forthcoming with our content and our, our information. It's right up front, very transparent, makes it easy on the competitors. <laughs> yep, yep. All right. Well, we really appreciate you coming on today. Um, just as a little uh, shout out for our audience, uh, find us on any platform at Campground Compass. You can uh, check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, anywhere. At Campground Compass, you can also watch the full-length podcast on YouTube as a video, or on you can listen to it on Spotify, Apple, Overcast, Stitcher, Amazon, iHeartRadio, uh, any sort of platforms like that. If you want to go check out our website, campgroundcompasspodcast.com, and uh, if you want to email us, got any ideas, got any suggestions, telling us we messed something up, doing something wrong, let us know. Hi at campgroundcompasspodcast.com, and uh, we'll reply to you. So... Hopefully y'all enjoyed. Hopefully y'all got some value and uh, I appreciate y'all listening. Yeah, See y'all next a lot, week Barb. with a great episode. See ya. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening to Campground Compass. I'm so glad you joined us. Check out the show notes and more of our seasoned advice at campgroundcompasspodcast.com. While you're there, be sure to explore the archives for previous episodes. And if you never want to miss a single audio adventure in four season business growth, Subscribe to this podcast here and on YouTube. If you like what you're hearing, please consider leaving us a positive review on iTunes. It would be very much appreciated. Friends on social media, check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Campground Compass. Until next time, stay savvy.